Welcome to the PFP graduation. This is the third year that we're doing a graduation. We would love to have you in person. We'd love to be able to do what universities do, have you walk across the stage and receive the diploma and then all through your hats in the air at the end. However, it's hard to do that when we have graduates across the country. Uh, we've done this all virtually, we're in different cities. And so the next best way to do a graduation is to have a virtual graduation like we're doing today. So we're really, really pleased to have you. First of all, let me start with the results of the, um, of the PFPs, and let me introduce my guest. So I'm with Carissa Lucruciano. She is the PFP Council Chair, and she is also the Vice President of Financial Investment and Investment Advice at CIBC. And this is not Carissa's first rodeo <laughs> with us. Uh, Carissa has been a faithful member of the PFP Council for some time, and I'll talk a little bit about the Council because it's really important work that is done by volunteers for um, CSI uh, in terms of making sure that the, the PFP designation is credible and governed properly. Let me just talk about the graduates. This year, we are pleased to say that we have a total of 567 individuals who have graduated in the 2022-2023 graduating year between September and September of this year. In total, so this group of 567 join a group of 5,880 individuals who are already PFP holders. So we have a strong PFP presence across the country. And 402 of the 567 individuals have accepted their badges. And I'll talk about the badges in a moment because it is really, it's a really important part of the program that we do. So, Carissa, maybe a couple of words of congratulations here yeah, as well. Absolutely. First, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I think this is such an important uh, time and to celebrate, you know, all of the graduates. Congratulations to everyone. What a milestone, uh, hard work, determination, and now it's solidifying you know, your profession. So just congratulations. It just it really starts from here. And it's exciting to be able to celebrate absolutely all of these like 500 and over 567. That's right. That's a lot. That's, That's right. a lot of graduates. That's right. So let me talk a little bit about the badges, because it's not just about getting the PFP. It's also making sure that people know you have the PFP. It's also making sure that the PFP is visible. And one of the ways we try and make the, the, the PFP visible is by granting people badges. The badge is an official uh, certificate, a virtual certificate that you're able to put on your LinkedIn profile. Um, and that represents the fact to your clients, to your family, to your friends, that you have achieved the PFP. So it's a great milestone and a great way for you to communicate to your clients. And when you, when you celebrate that badge with your, with your clients and your, and your family, make sure to say um, and, and continue to say things about what the PFP does for you and what you bring to the table as a PFP. So it's easy to get the badge if you haven't got it already. You just click on accept the badge and then make sure it's posted on your LinkedIn profile. It's as easy as that. So let me just talk about the, the PFP Advisory Council. For this designation, it is really important to have oversight because in the end, you are going to be responsible for holding yourself out as a PFP and the public will come to you as someone who holds that designation. So it's really important for us to make sure that we have proper oversight of the designation. So we have a council made up of people like Carissa who come from the financial services industry. Some of them are coming from colleges and universities and together they bring their expertise in education, their expertise in financial planning and in advisory services in the financial institutions, both banks and non-banks, all kinds of financial institutions are represented. And on the council, the council really looks at the performance of the PFP, the exams and how they're doing, the competencies, and every five years the group will revisit all the competencies to make sure that the competencies are what we need. And so the role of the uh, council is really important. And finally, if we have issues with ethics, those are also brought to the council and the council will provide guidance to us. So we're really, really, really fortunate, Carissa, to have you and the rest of the council members with us to be able to oversee the PFP. So let me talk a moment to the PFP graduates because I'm really, really proud of what you've done. Um, 
one of the things that is really, really important, and it's something that the regulators have emphasized to us, us this year, is really around putting your client interests first. It is the most important thing you can do, and why? People give your financial institution their money. They come to you for advice. They count on you for your, their future well-being. And so it's really important for you to understand what is it they're exactly looking for in order for you to give the best advice and make the best product and service recommendations. And so people come to you and they trust you. And in order to gain that trust and keep that trust, you need to make sure that you understand who they are, who they are and where they want to go. And so lots of questions around what I would call client discovery are really important. What do you know about this client? What do you know about their family? What do you know about how they think about money and what they're hoping for? What are they hoping for their future, the future of themselves, for their children, their retirement? I'm sure they're all things that you, you think about and you talk about with your clients, but it's really, really important for you to get to know the client. And in many cases, it's not only important for you to get to know the client, but it's also important to get to know their spouse and their families, because invariably, when wealth is passed on, and we're going to go through a very big period now where wealth will be passed on from one generation to the other, it's really important for you to know who are the children in this relationship and what do they want because they will invariably inherit money that then they will want to use and you will want to be their advisor. And so knowing them and their ambitions are equally as important as knowing those of your clients. So I cannot emphasize enough that putting the client first is really, really important. And now, Carissa, maybe a few words for the graduates. Yeah, absolutely. So I wanted to talk about a few things. And Marie, you just talked about something so important, like intergenerational planning and, and how important that's going to be, you know, more and more important over the years. I wanted to talk just, you know, about three very important aspects. One of them is the importance of financial planning to Canadians. And we know, you know, even over the last several years, how much financial well-being and financial planning and importance is, is it's really high on the priority list for Canadians. And so, you know, when you think about this and you think about just, you just think about the last few years and what we've been through, you think about the, the factors that have affected Canadians in everything from having maybe less disposable income to, you know, the way in which they look at their debt payments and the way they, they want to save and the way they, they need to start thinking about saving. Things like interest rates, as you know, uh, March, 20, uh, March 2022, we had a rapid eight, eight time uh, increase uh, in interest rates that have really changed and shift the way mm -hmm. that we, you know, manage our finances, you know, pause for a bit, then there was a few more, we're sitting at 5% right now, uh, in terms of rates in the Bank of Canada, and, you know, everybody in Canada, and I think across, you know, the globe is an anticipating, you know, when are things going to start to, to get a little easier? Well, our clients need help, Canadians need help. And, you know, when it comes to managing finances, when it comes to uh, saving for the future, you know, these are things that we can absolutely help Canadians with. Now, at CIBC, we did a financial priorities poll, and interesting enough, and I'm sure all of you have heard, you know, different variations of these types of um, polls and surveys, the most important goals for Canadians right now are paying down debt, which is pretty obvious, right? <laughs> paying down debt, um, saving for the future, which is great, because that's in Canadians' minds. They want to save wealth, like you talked about, their families, you know, uh, creating wealth uh, for the future. And then as well, the day-to-day. -day. And I think that's where it starts, Marie, is the day-to-day -day finances and managing uh, the budget, managing the cash flow, because that's how you really are able to determine, you know, what and how you can save. So, you know, the need for financial planning is just getting stronger and stronger. I've been in the industry 20 years, and I was so proud to start off years ago, and it's just only got the magnitude is so much bigger. So uh, the need for financial planning is, is here, it's now. And then, you know, the importance uh, for the ro uh, in the role of a financial planner or an advisor. Marie talked about it. I think you summed it up beautifully, Marie. Um, you know, intergenerational planning right now is so important. Bringing the whole family into the fold. Starting with what is important to that client. That is the relationship. It's that relationship. And, and the advisor-client role or the planner-client role is really about that. It's starting off about building trust, building that relationship, and building that connection because that's what's going to ensure that that relationship continues. So I think, you know, the, the role of the advisor is so, so important. What you can, what you're able to provide clients, um, you know, edu helping educate them on their finances, giving them really good practices and tips, 
sharing resources, sharing your knowledge in your profession, um, you know, as well as help them build wealth and understanding their values, like Marie stated, and, and their family values is really, really important. The last thing I'll touch on is the importance of being part of the professional community yeah. of, you know, our profession, you know, financial planning advice. It's, it's a wonderful thing. I think me and Marie are, you know, big cheerleaders around <laughs> it and, and many of you watching and all of us, but, um, you know, you just saw that the Marie just recited the numbers. There's over 6,000 PFP holders now. So that's a community of professions. So, you know, stay connected, learning. It, we're always learning, right? Like, you know, you take your debt, you, you, you complete your designation, but it doesn't stop there. That's a very big pride. And that is, you know, the foundation, but keep on learning, keep on, you know, you know, researching and seeing what else can you bring to your clients. And then as well, the connection to the community, other advisors and planners and, you know, maybe that are close to you or it may be in slightly different um, industries and, and, and different areas of, you know, finance overall. Uh, so I think those are three important elements to think about is really keeping in mind the importance of financial planning and advice to Canadians is it's here, it's now. It has been here for a while, but it's so, so important. Canadians are looking for advice and they're looking for advice from professional accredited um, uh, individuals that can help them with their goals for their family. The importance of the role uh, is just, you know, that connection. People need help and support. It's like all other professions out there. And then, you know, be part of the community, see how you can connect and stay connected and always continue learning. Great. Thank you so much, Carissa. I think you brought up some really important points around thinking about where where you fit into a client's uh, well-being and livelihood and making sure that you are acting confidently and competently in providing the financial advice that you give to your clients. This is an era where there's lots of uncertainty. Um, there's, there's interest rate and all that kind of thing that's happening. And it's really, really hard for clients to know what they should be doing, how they should be acting, where they should be investing, where they should be holding back. And all of that uh, culminates in the kind of advice that you as PFPs are going to be giving to your clients. Not only that, but our belief has always been that every client deserves some kind of financial advice. Whether they're very simple clients, that mid-level people that are mostly worried about their retirement and their, their families and so on. And then there's people who have high net worth who are also coming to see a PFP. And all of those various levels are going to need various levels of advice. So fitting the advice to the level of people you're dealing with is really, really important. Let me move on now to recognizing three people um, among you who have um, who received, basically who've won, who've earned the top three marks in the PFP exams. So I'd like to congratulate in particular, Simon Moriello, who is our first place winner, and Mandy Yuan Man O, oh, who is our second place winner, and Toby Yuan, who is our third place winner. And Toby has accepted to do a testimonial, and so we'll have that testimonial now. Hi, everyone. My name is Toby Yuan. I'm currently working as a financial advisor at CIBC. Um, I joined CIBC back in 2021 and uh, noticed that most of those tenured advisors hold a PFP designation. So a calm conversation with them, I realized that PFP is a must have if I want to further my career in financial planning. So I started my pursuit of PFP designation uh, right after. So when I registered the course, I was preparing myself for a one year long boring journey. But to my surprise, the study was quite enjoyable and constantly I could use the new knowledge from the courses and apply to my work. And going through the entire program has enabled me better advise my clients. And I would strongly suggest everybody to start your journey as soon as you can. Hi. Thank you very much, Toby. Uh, very well said. Uh, appreciate the, the fact that this designation for you was um, very beneficial and that you've been able to use it throughout your PFP. And I think that is the case for for many people who are studying, and even if you go on to other designations, our hope is really that as you study, you already are getting knowledge that you can use on Monday morning. So every part of these, the courses that you give are useful and applicable from the moment you're back on the job. 
Thank you very much also for, for speaking about uh, your, your thinking about your career in, uh, in financial services and particularly as a PFP. So I'd like to close the graduation with two things. One of the things is I'd like to be able to say that as a, as a designation holder, you will now have access to resources that are provided on our website, webinars and all kinds of, um, all kinds of things that we do to make sure that we're adding value to the PFP and it doesn't just stop here. So as we, as we come up with topics, for example, we've just been through uh, Financial Literacy Month here in November and we've held a number of, um, of webinars about giving advice and, and women in financial services and so on. So we also do this graduation every year, and it's kind of a way for us to stop and say, wow, you did it. You have accomplished something that other people don't just accomplish because you've put in the work, you've put in the time and the effort. Your family has accepted the sacrifice. You've managed to try and work very often and, and do this at the same time. Or you've been studying, and you've been studying many other things as well as the PFP. And so congratulations on on getting to where you are. And remember, and I think Christy, you kind of alluded to this in your, in your speech. You talked about community mm -hmm. and how important community is. And really one of the connections you'll want to make is into your community. Make sure you're involved, make sure you're seen, make sure that you, people know you're there and that you can contribute in some way to the community because there's always a giving back here. We, we take from people um, and we, we, we have the benefit of working with them, but it's also to make sure that the community benefits from our advice and, our, and what we can give to the community as well. So I'd like to now roll, um, and we will end the graduation with this, there'll be continued roll of all the PFPs that have been awarded today. So congratulations. Carissa, thank you very much for joining me here. Thank you for it's me. been It's been a pleasure to, uh, to do this with you. Yes, you've, uh, and congratulations uh, to all the grads. Congratulations. Thank you.